guys want to interview my old ass? Yeah. Well, you're coming off Iowa where you set a uh, master's world record. Yeah, and then I just, I don't know. Yeah, I can't, can't pass it. I don't know what you guys are, where this is going. Well, what's the experience like just being here in Iowa? What's the experience like coming off Iowa and now here in New Balance just running again? Oh, it's just nice to be back in like not warming up in snow. <laughs> like the last four years I had to warm up and like everybody's like, oh, it's so cold. I'm like, this is what I would warm up in outside on the concrete in the parking lot for bobsled. So it's nice to be in like the comforts of an indoor track. I'm just so rusty though. Like race rusty is just incredible. And it's weird. Like I'll be good in practice and the warm ups, and then I get on the start line. It's like... I do just like a novice all over again. You recently uh, released your, your first book. Uh, I was curious, like, what was that, uh, like, just the writing process like? What did you find to be difficult, uh, exciting, you know, nervousness? Like, what was that like? Uh, well, I wrote that book during the pandemic. So I was stuck at home. And, like, that's literally when I had all the time in the world. And that's, I mean, I didn't know if I was going to go back to bobsled. I had no clue. And so I was like, let me just lay it all out there and hopefully inspire, like, the next generation or anybody who feels like they have something that's just stopping me because I have just overcome so much. And it's like, I, I, I love a challenge. Like, I get a kick out of overcoming a challenge. So. You've been one of the few athletes, uh, track athletes, that have been able to really transcend into more of the mainstream uh, of uh, media. You know, you've been on The Challenge, you've been in other reality shows, like, you've had a huge name. Like, what do you attribute that to, to being able to kind of translate into the mainstream? Look, I'll dogfight you over here, but no, I don't care if it's a reality show, Big Brother, Challenge, Track Beat, Bachelor, 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 to be honest, if I'm gonna get real real, I wrote a, a whole chapter about this in my book. And actually the Olympics unvolved me on TikTok because of it. But I talked about how athletes are not making money at the Olympics and how much money the Olympics makes. It's billions of dollars. And I've been to three Olympic games. I've never been paid a penny for any of the finals I've made. And you can get more money at a new balance race than you can at an Olympic Games. Tell me, tell me how that is justice to the athletes. And so I just wanted to make a change and hopefully we start making more games for athletes because it's getting tougher and tougher. I'm coming back and I'm seeing so many young, talented athletes that are unsponsored and it's blowing my mind. We have box competitions in Europe. It's so hard for track and field athletes to make a living. Like it's funny when I first went into bobsled and like the stipend we would get, was so measly. Now, you make more money as a bobsled athlete than like some of the best track and field athletes in the world. And that is crazy, crazy. We gotta do a better job of supporting our younger athletes because if not, Team USA is not gonna continue to have dominance at the Olympics and that has to start now. Well, I'm sure there's other competitors maybe asking coaches like, why, why are you still doing this? Like, what, what keeps you coming back? <laughs> there's like a, how much time do you have now? <laughs> um, so there's many reasons. The first and foremost is after Bob said, my heart was completely broke. I just had, my dad had just passed, you know, I thought that was gonna be my last Olympic push. And I felt like I was pushed out of the sport because of my age. And there were some things that happened with the Bob said community. I mean, there, now there's a different coach, but it was just so frustrating. I came back and I was just, I didn't know what to do. So I went out to New York, I was doing TV stuff and I really thought I was done as an athlete, but my mental health was just struggling. And I've always run just for mental health. And I had the time, my job allowed me flexibility to keep running with my group. So at first I was like, I'm just running out here, push Makai and Aaliyah, I'll, I'll like help them the first two steps. And then I started to get better and better and I, and I enjoy it, you know? Uh, every track competition I come to, I see former athletes that are now coaches. And I talk to them like, how did you know you were done? And they're like, I hated the training, I was burned out. I still love training, I still love competing, so I have the ability to do it financially, and so I'm gonna keep doing it until one of those busts. Maybe Coach Shaver has me do repeat 200s because I messed up today, and then I'm like, okay, I retire. But I'm on the Tom Brady retirement plan. So do you think like if you would have told 2012 Lolo, hey, you still might be going through and doing this in 2024 Olympic trials, like would, would you have thought it would be true? Uh, I've never thought I'd be running masters <laughs> never ever <laughs> that was never the goal people <laughs> never the goal <laughs> but hey maybe i'll pick up like 
gray hair dye sponsorship or like a cane sponsorship, who knows, or arthritis medicine. These things are happening for me, guys. <laughs> can you talk about, or can you give 